one. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? I know you're excited about your guest. Such programming. It's such a great thing what he's doing, our guest. Absolutely. Eric Goss, who is the founder and CEO of Minnow, and the things that you have done. You were in the Navy. Thank you for your service. I'm in Michigan. You graduated from U of M, I believe. And I'm green, however, instead of blue, but Understood. I'll, I'll Understood. let you get away with it today. Worked for Amazon, did amazing things at Amazon. You've done so much in your life. I have to tell you, the thing that I commend you the most for is raising three daughters, because mm-hmm. that's some tough work. Boys, way easier, I got to say. <laughs> so you, you're married, you've got three kids, and Minnow is amazing what you're doing. And now you've got this Christmas special coming out that I can't wait to see. And so uh, welcome to the show, Pete. Yeah, Pete. well, thanks for- Welcome to the show, Eric. <laughs> well, thanks for having me here. I'm, it's grateful, I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, Eric, yeah, well, it's, so it's just gotta feel great. From last time we talked, where the growth is with, with Minnow. Yes. Update yeah. the, uh, the people, the listeners and viewers. Yeah, what's interesting, so obviously our primary product, so Minnow is a, um, we're a children and media technology company. Our primary product is the Minnow Kids streaming app, but we started doing original shows last year and started just releasing them. And what we recognize is if you want to reach kids, you've got to be on YouTube. And and we started a YouTube initiative in March of this year, just before Easter. And we just, like, I think we had a few thousand subscribers. And from that time to today, we're now over 200,000 subscribers. We're going from just a few thousand views a week to now we go over a million to a million and a half views per week. And, and um, about 40% of our audience is here in the U.S. 60% is outside the U.S., which is just amazing. And uh, and we it took us six months to get to 100,000 subscribers. It took us three months to get to 200,000 subscribers. And so um, we're just continuing to see the channel scale. And really, I think the reason that is, is the quality of the content. Um, we have a award-winning children's Bible called the Laugh and Grow Bible for Kids. Um, and uh, in Phil Vischer, if you know Veggie Tales, Phil Vischer, creator of Veggie Tales, wrote the Bible. So it's really funny. It's unique in the marketplace because um, it's a children's Bible that kids like to read by themselves. Um, and we took that Bible and decided to do a video series. And what's amazing when you look at the market, there are all kinds of great children's Bibles, but there are no children's Bibles that actually have video series that support them. And so um, what we've seen is that those videos have just really taken off, that people are looking for high quality video to help them under- their kids understand the videos. Kids want to know kind of what the Bible's about. And so we've just seen great engagement um, and just and, and it's also you know interesting to be in a world of YouTube and just to see that type of growth and to see that type of engagement um, where, you know, typically we wouldn't expect that. But what we're recognizing is, you know, again, the largest probably children's viewing platform in the world for better or for worse is YouTube. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And you see kids on their devices all the time. And I you, you mentioned quality. It is so good. I love the way that you do it, that you have, you know, the the kids that are always there and a narrator kind of guy that's bringing them through, talking them through it. And the graphics are great. Like everything about it is just great, high quality. It's entertaining. And so it doesn't surprise me at all, the numbers that you're at. And I'm sure you're going to just continue to grow and grow and grow. And uh, so in making it, how did you decide exactly how you were going to do it? Well, a, a couple of things that are important to, to note just about the when we founded Menno. The first is when you talk to Christian parents and you tell them that you're doing something for kids that, you know, for in children's media. Unfortunately, the expectation for most Christian parents is that it can't be good. Um, because there have been so many mediocre projects that the bar is really low and they don't expect to see quality. And what's been really unique about Minnow is we have really tried to set a high bar. I learned that at the Pentagon, flying helicopters, learned that at Amazon, that we really want to set a high bar. That doesn't guarantee success, um, but it definitely means you're going to be at least good. Um, and, and it sets you up for, for greater success. And so when you look at the team that's involved, like our, our um, educational specialist that we brought in to help coach our team is an educational specialist from Sesame Street. Um, 
when you look at the team that's been advising their um, folks that work with, you know, have worked with Disney, have worked with PBS Kids, have worked with the Cartoon Network, Discovery Kids. And so, but, but we wanted to take that best practice, but we really wanted to make sure that we were taking a Christian worldview and that we were delivering on the value proposition of helping kids really understand the Bible. And so for each of our stories, we actually work with a team of seminarians to make sure that we are communicating those stories in a way that it's accessible to the entire church. And so, you know, because some people who are charismatic might look at certain stories a certain way. Other people who might be Anglican or be Presbyterian or more liturgical might look at stories in a different light. And so what we wanted to do is make sure that the Bible actually could serve the entire church and then also think about it globally. And so not just doing an animated series that can actually be used here in the U.S., but what can and we do to dub that animation. And we really wanted to use the animation because the animation actually can go global really, really quickly. And what, what you're seeing with the innovations in AI and with dubbing, we actually can take our um, Laugh and Grow Bible for Kids into multiple languages to make it accessible globally. And so all of that intent kind of goes into what we did. The other thing that you mentioned is the kid narrators. Kids love to see kids. And, and so we really wanted to make sure that uh, children could be invited in the, the children themselves ask questions um, about the story. And oftentimes kids have questions, but they're embarrassed to ask, like because they go to church, I'm supposed to know this. And so what it does is it just opens things up and goes, oh, it's actually OK to have a question about that. It's OK to be curious about that. And so there's a lot of intentionality. There's one sense where like I've heard some people go, oh, it's just Christian cartoons for kids. Um, and, and the reality is it's really challenging to deliver high quality children's media because, you know, it, it's easy to do something educational that's boring and it's easy to do something that's really entertaining um, that isn't very educational. It's really, you know, challenging to do something that's entertaining and educational. And I feel like the team has done a great job in delivering on that value proposition. And that's great. And I think that you just are always looking to innovate. Every time, I, the last time I had you on, you're talking about innovation. This time you're looking at innovation and you're looking at how you differentiate yourself. There's really no one in the marketplace. So that's another challenge, right? And think about marketing. There's really no one like you. So how do you, who is really your competitors? That's, that's important to look at when you own a company like this. Yeah, it's really challenging. And and the children's market, like even YouTube looks at children's uh, looks at children's content and children's channels differently. And so you have to think about how do we think about working on YouTube? And then how do you know, one of the things we've been really blessed by is Tim Tebow has joined our board this year. Um, Sean Johnson East has joined our board. And so we've seen real value of working with influencers and having them as our brand ambassadors to really help us build and supporting the other aspects of our uh, marketing efforts. And so it's really kind of all those things working together. Another initiative that we put in place this year is we actually are making Menno free to church staff. Um, so church staff can have free access to Menno and then making Menno free to congregations for three months to give them a chance to try it, to test it out. And so all of those programs kind of coming together are helping us get the word out. But one of the things that I wanted to do when first founded Menno is what does it mean for us to create an economy around children's content? There are a lot of people who are trying to fund a show or do kind of a program or a movie. But the reality is Christian parents want a constant stream of content. The only way to have that constant stream is to build a company to do that. And that's really what our passion is. What can we do to build an institution that can create a foundation for an economy that's always delivering high quality children's content from a biblical worldview? So interesting the way that you just said that. It's uh, what a great idea. How did you, what prompted you to move from where you were and get into this? Yeah, it's a, it's a long story, but but in short, I, there are a couple kind of key moments. One is I became a Christian at the Naval Academy through an organization called The Navigators that's really great at discipleship. And so discipleship has always been a big key part of, of my walk. When, when I had a chance to work at Amazon, I, um, I had a chance to work on a lot of the early digital media initiatives and a lot of the early corporate strategy. And what I recognized as we got out of a world of DVDs and got into a world streaming, that actually power and decision-making about content being funded was going to be concentrated, not distributed. And so everyone's like, oh, digital is actually going to make, you know, the long tail and there's going to be more opportunities. But when it comes to funding and distribution and you start thinking about subscriptions, actually power and decision-making becomes much more concentrated. And so as, a, as, a, as a, someone who's concerned about Christian media, 
we recognize that we're either going to become a marketing agency sending people to see our products where we might get pennies on the dollar for what we're investing in, or we could set up a platform where we can actually say kids are, are first class citizens and faith is a first class citizen. And so we recognize if we could aggregate people who cared about that, then that would actually allow us to create a business model and enough free cash flow where there are a lot of Christian creatives that are in mainstream children's media that are desperate, desirous to tell stories about Jesus. But there are no institutions that they can go to secure the funding to be able to bring those stories to life. And, and what we wanted to do was to create a company where we could actually become sort of an enabler of all that creative talent um, to bring those stories to life. And then probably the other thing was when I was at um, when I was in Seattle, I helped plant a church. Um, Seattle is not known for its Christian population. Uh, and uh, and what I recognize is probably 50 percent of the people who came to our church and joined it were new Christians and they were young families and they were really struggling with what it meant to disciple their kids. And, you know, there are two things families do a lot of. They eat meals together and they watch media together. And, you know, if you look at the stats, the average child goes to uh, children's ministry once a month. And, and, and yet there are a lot of people who have strong faith con convictions, but those families are really struggling. What does it mean to integrate our faith into our life? Well, one of the ways to do that is to have a media presence. And, you know, our mission is what can we do to help kids and their parents experience Jesus every day? Um, and even the name Menno is based on the Greek word for abide from John 15, where Jesus says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you'll produce much fruit. And we want to help those families become fruit producers for the Lord. And so that's really kind of the heartbeat of Menno is what can we do to make it super easy for parents um, to do what they really want to do. But in many ways, culture and the society that we live in has created a lot of obstacles and a lot of friction from them following through on what they really want to do. Um, the one thing I'll mention is, you know, as parents, when we go to bed at night, there's sort of a sense of, man, we either did a good job or a bad job or we struggled with our kids or we put points on the board. And those nights where I've, where I've had a moment with my girls where I'm like, you know what, I think I was a good dad today. Um, I've heard so many parents talk about Menno helping them be a good dad or a good mom. And that's really what my heart is, is what can we do to help those parents go to bed and not feel like they've survived, but they're actually thriving in their obedience to the Lord and helping their kids know Jesus. Now, I wanted to ask the question again for the special. Tell us about that Christmas special again. Yeah, so the team had a really great idea, which is um, we've been seeing so much success on YouTube. Um, and uh, the Christmas special is really unique in the fact that we actually, um, uh, Tim Tebow actually said, he goes, man, that Laugh and Grow Bible, that's intense. You guys are talking about Abrahamic uh, uh, promises and prophecies and, and in regards to the Christmas story. And, and what we recognize is it, we've done a really good job of helping people understand both the prophecies about who Jesus is and then Jesus's life and his birth. And so as we talked about this, we thought, you know what, why don't we just make this freely available? You can see the episodes on YouTube, but we don't have like our special in a way where we can invite everybody in to be able to watch that Christmas special. And, uh, you know, and I know when I was growing up as a kid, the Christmas specials were a big deal. And so we just wanted to make that available, um, freely available to the church and to families globally so they could all hear the story of Jesus um, and his birth at Christmas time. Excellent. What's the best place? Uh, what's the best place people can find information on you, Eric? And yeah, so, so they can they can check us out at gomeno.com. That's g o m i n n o dot com. Um, they can look for us on YouTube at Menno Kids. We'll have the 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 um, the streaming event um, on December seventeenth. So they can check us check us out on YouTube. And then if they want to check out our app, they can look at our app in any of the major app stores. Just search on Menno Kids, and you'll find us. Thanks, Eric. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Uh, that was a special Simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love is Podcast, guys.